Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and so far we've talked about reconciliation, baptism, the Eucharist, confirmation, and matrimony. Now the sacrament of holy orders. What is holy orders? How does it work? Holy orders is how bishops, priests, deacons, and subdeacons of the Catholic Church are ordained and given the authority, power, and grace that they need to perform their new role. It's called holy orders because it's actually a process which is bestowed on candidates through a series of different grades which the candidates complete in order. The grades are 1. Tonsure, where the hair is clipped by the bishop and the candidate for priesthood is dedicated to the service of the altar. 2. Porter, three, reader, four, exorcist, and five, acolyte. Grades two through five are minor orders, but the candidate for priesthood is still permitted by each one to perform some duty that non-ordained people traditionally don't. Six, subdeacon, which involves a life of chastity and saying the prayers of the liturgy of the hours every day. More on those later. Seven and deacon, bestowing the power to preach, baptize, and offer Holy Communion. Beyond that is the priesthood, granting the power to offer to the sacrifice of the Mass and forgive sins in the sacraments of the Eucharist and reconciliation. These different grades aren't all given at once. However, they aren't separate sacraments either, just different parts of the single sacrament of Holy Orders. Being ordained a subdeacon, deacon, or priest is a lifelong calling, which means that the person can't just unordain themselves if they get tired of serving the Lord at the altar. This sacrament is only valid if the person being ordained is a baptized Catholic man who's healthy and at least 25 years old. To receive the sacrament worthily, you should also be in a state of grace and have the knowledge that you need and be called to be a priest, bishop, deacon, and so on. That calling is referred to as a vocation, and if we have a constant inclination towards such a life out of a motive to serve God better through it, if we're able to prepare for it, and if we have personal holiness as well, those can be good signs that we have a vocation of that sort. If someone is genuinely called to a vocation in this way, it would be sinful to try to stop them from pursuing it, even for their parents. Next time, what's the actual procedure of ordaining a priest like? What happens during the sacrament? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.